welcome friends uh, legal breeze welcomes you for yet another program on the constitutional lecture today we are going to discuss about a very important aspect relating to the fundamental rights that everybody in the life in one way or another we practice this right we exercise this right in our day to day life what is that right that right is right to freedom of religion that's that's the question now what are all the rights guaranteed or freedom guaranteed under the constitution what are the exception to this how the court has interpreted those rights and freedoms and what are the controversies or political mix associated with those aspects are some of the issues which we will be discussing today in our program uh, freedom of religion comes under part 3 between article uh, from article 25 to 28 and there is a relationship between each and every article first let us go through article 25 25 guarantees please remember 25 guarantees both religious rights as well as secular rights this is very important people many time thinks that secularism is different from religious rights our freedom of religion as a different concept and secularism is a different concept no there may be some difference but it's not just opposite to one another one should complement to another that is how our constitutional framers have structured article 25 in fact 25 imposes lot of restrictions than other article which imposes certain restrictions for example article 25 begins with subject to public order morality health and other restrictions available in this part what it means the restrictions imposed under article 19 shall also be applicable for article 25 whereas the same may not be applicable to article 26 because article 26 uses prescribes only three restrictions that is public order morality and health so please remember 25 is very wider as well as it has certain wider exemptions or wider wider restrictions also so what it guarantees first it's not only guarantees a freedom of religion to practice propagate and promote their own religious affairs or religious freedom but it also talks about conscience that's very important whatever your conscience is you can do that so that's why people always equate people may have faith in god or people should have faith in their conscience this is very important the uh, people should remember there is a case law called mick powell versus us this is a very important case till then people those who are taking oath for any official position they have to swear in the name of the god and mick powell is an atheist who doesn't believe in god and who has never taken oath in the form, in, in in the name of swearing of god so therefore though he has been successfully elected as an mp to the congress but he has been expelled again he has contested the election and he has successfully elected but again next time he has been expelled this time he didn't take rest he challenges the same in the supreme court of us supreme court of us analyzes the question is there any ground in the us constitution which prescribe that a person should have religious faith to become a member in the congress the answer is no and therefore that rule mandating the persons to take oath in the name of god has been struck down by the supreme court of us that is how the secular character has been uh, seeded long ago in all oath taking ceremonies and people the, the language also comes into the into the oath taking ceremony countries like india some people would like to take oath of their office in their mother tongue that is also permissible under the constitution so let me not go into that uh, for the time being uh, because our subject matter of discussion is little different from those things the next one important case is that lemon versus kurzman uh, this case la maybe i can discuss it okay we can discuss it here itself which uh, again the state shall not intervene in the uh, educational institution when it is religiously maintained on the other hand the religion shall no have no place 
in the public educational institution there shall be a complete separation between religious activities and educational activities and state shall never promote directly or indirectly any religious activities inside the public educational institution in fact this ruling has been borrowed under article 28 to a greater extent that we will be discussing little later then freedom of conscience i have told you freedom of conscience can be you can term it as secular and please remember our constitution provides protection in the name of secular to those who have faith in god as well as those who do not have faith in god this is a peculiar character of our indian constitution then there are certain exception to this uh, class 1 embedded under article 25 what are the classes there are there are classes 2a and 2b 2a talks about again for the first time the secular the word secular itself has been embedded under article 25 it says that uh, the state is free to regulate economic political financial and other secular activities associated with the religious institutions or religious affairs please remember there is a clear cut demarcation has been made by our constitutional framework what constitutes secular activities and what constitutes religious activities and then they go on telling and in another subclass b of 2 that social welfare and social reforms but this a uh, phrase is restricted but this regulations can be imposed by the state only in relation to the in the case of hindu religious affairs okay say example there are se- certain sections of population who have been denied to have access to the temples they cannot go and access to temples they cannot go and worship the deity inside the temple untouchability has been practiced for a quite long time please remember this sort of untouchability prevails in one way or another the sabrimala case is the best example till this date people can go to the space people can women are able to go to the outer space women are able to fight in the fighter jet in the naval navy army air force etc but it is believed that women cannot enter into sabrimala temple because of security reasons or some other reasons so this is i do not know how it Uh, how it can be accepted under this modern era that's why our honorable supreme court has given a very very historical uh, very predictive ruling however the same ruling could not be enforced in a democratic country like us what it shows is only shows majoritarian tyrannism or brutal majority absolute power corrupts absolutely a democratically elected government couldn't enforce the supreme court ruling i don't feel that the government whatever party it is they don't have any right to administer the country anyhow let's not go into that subject matter beyond this then comes article 26 again this is another right granted to the institutions to practice to manage their religious affairs this is very important what are the rights associated with this they can establish their own institution and maintain their institution for the purposes of promoting religious affairs and charitable affairs this is very important that's the difference between the next article okay and uh, religious affairs and charitable affairs can go hand in hand for that they can earn income they can uh, earn movable and immovable property they have every right to administer the property according to the wishes for applying the proceeds for religious affairs as well as charitable affairs there are many laws associated with that you have charitable endowments act you have income tax act okay there are many laws which is regulating those things then you have uh, article 27 which gives you freedom from payment of tax to promote your own religious affairs you all know about aurangzeb who has imposed a tax called jizya upon non muslims that sort of taxes can never take place in the constitution in the modern constitution in modern india under the constitution of our country that's not feasible and it it is it this right is given to all the religious institutions whether it is majority minority no question set up so that one should keep remembering and uh, we have certain provisions under the income tax act which gives you complete exemption uh, for this set of activities next one is uh, article 28 
which deals with religious instruction as well as religious education in the state based institutions aided institutions and non aided institutions please remember this is a very important right a uh, supreme court has been asked to explain what constitutes religious uh, instruction and what constitutes religious education in the case called uh, aruna rai versus union of india the supreme court says that religious instruction has been banned under the article 28 and not the religious education what is the difference between religious instruction and religious education for example if i say you have to worship in a particular manner and ask the people to practice it okay that may be amounting to religious instruction but if i say who is jesus christ who is uh, uh, prophet muhammad who is uh, lord krishna what are their preachings what is the model associated with that whether it has any relevance today and these are the things can be considered as uh, religious education we all study there are certain literature secular literature called tirukkural right we also study certain religious uh, literature called tiruvarutpa uh, many more things like we have also studied esu kavyam sira puranam something like that periya puranam all these things we have studied so this will never be t- treated as religious instruction but it is religious in- education this is very important in a secular country to understand about the importance of one religion of another uh, or all the religious uh, good things can be practiced from all the religions for that we need to create awareness so that people will respect one another that's very very important people will not have ego that your religion is superior than me or my religion is superior than yours that concept should never be uh, practiced there are many cases uh, relating to religious sect in arvindo ashramam case uh, they have asked whether a particular sect today people are also having followers to isha sadguru what they call it uh, to jaggi vasudev or uh, there are many lifestyles promoted by ravi shankar somebody like this whether these people can claim as a separate religious sect the answer is no supreme court has made it very categorical in arvindo ashramam case in baba ante case no people uh, people believed that baba will never die and his dead body was decaying so the state has to intervene for the uh, complete a uh, decent burial of baba ante so this right no will not be stretched to that extent this this is coming under the exception subject uh, subject to public order health and morality so please remember every right comes with certain exceptions the state has a role to regulate everything Uh, in emman venkata chalaya commission you all know there is a constitution review panel has been appointed under the previous nda regime under uh, uh, what is this um, uh, uh, pm uh, vajpayee ji's uh, leadership this commission has recommended along with article 20 and 21 which is non suspendable during emergency period the freedom of religion can also be made as a non suspendable right please remember this freedom of religion is also applicable to non citizens because the word used is all persons under these things if you have any doubts please raise it uh, put it in the comments box we would like to answer you all the very best uh, to all of you and we would like to thank those who are all supporting us in this journey thank you all and god bless you